I guess with Dad being a member of the RUC, my early memories were just against the backdrop of the troubles in our country. One of my very earliest memories that stays with me is in P3 for a parent-teacher evening. Uh, Dad was due to finish work in the afternoon but hadn't come home that night and long before the days of mobile phones we didn't know where he was and it was only when we got home that night that we found out that an RUC officer had been shot dead. So in that evening there was a loss of life but this time it wasn't my dad's. You know and if we fast forward some years later to 1993 when the, the anger and bitterness really took root inside me. Dad had medically retired from the police um, and had to go in through for his first triple bypass. I'm not too sure if you remember, but 1993 was also one of the worst atrocities in this country, uh, the Schenkel bombing. And I can remember going into the hospital in the intensive care to see Dad after his operation. And here he lay in a hospital bed, so vulnerable. Um, and I couldn't do anything to help him. But each time we went to visit Dad in the hospital, we also had to pass the, the room where the Schenkel bomber was being treated. And I remember the anger and the bitterness that crept up inside me. You know, at that time, I really gave up on God. And then some years later, 1997, the one that really tipped me over the edge, mum and sister were out of the house. And the police came to the door to see my dad, took my dad into the kitchen. And there and then they uh, informed him that he was on an INLA hit list and it was that severe they wanted him to move house. That angerness and bitterness that grew up inside me just took hold of me that night. And all those years when I, I made any excuse not to go to church, there was one occasion that I did have to go to church in 2003, which was from niece's christening, whenever uh, the minister had mentioned about a mission trip to Sierra Leone. And I remember this very audible voice saying to me, Graham, you have to do that. And I remember being in a church in Kailoon where we were staying on New Year's Eve and seeing one of the most incredible sights, one of the most outpourings of emotions I've ever seen. At 12 o'clock, I seen two grown men crying, crumbling to the ground, and I asked the interpreter what had happened. The guy who threw out his arms looking for the hug had lost his wife and daughter through the Civil War, and the man that he threw his arms open to was the man who took a machete and killed his, his wife and his daughter. And I couldn't believe it, I couldn't understand why. I couldn't understand that why this man had opened his arms and I asked the interpreter to explain. And he said that the guy who threw open his arms, his words were, I have to, I have to. He says, because what consumes my life will control my life. I felt that was a message for me. I couldn't let bitterness and anger uh, consume my life because it would control every decision I made, it would control how I lived, and that's not what I wanted to be. Just through some R&R &R, sitting on a beach in Freetown in Sierra Leone, I remember just giving my life to the Lord. I remember saying, Lord, you know, I, I get it. I really get it, Lord. You know, and it's incredible to look back over this journey of some 15 years to, to see how God's hand has been upon your life, how he's taken you from position in one job and the another, maybe to be a light until somebody's path. How he brought an incredible woman and Lindsay back into my life, who's now my, my wife. You know, Deuteronomy 31, six says, be strong and courageous, do not fear, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you.